It is 6.04 and I think I'm gonna open up the meeting and, and get it started. Um, we appreciate everyone joining in tonight for our Southern Dolls Neighborhood Self-Defense Project. My name is Marsha Jackson. I will be opening up and also I'm gonna introduce the SSR uh, Steering Committee. Uh, we have uh, Eric Wilson in District 8 representing. Also, our co-chair is Mr. Alan McGill of District 8. We have Bonnie Mathias in District 5, and I might miss some of the districts. I apologize if I do. Um, there is also um, yes, Miss um, Patricia is not online, but she also represents on District 4. And Stacy Brown, we all um, have uh, Fatima. Fatima is also helping us and representing um, district different areas. Also, and um, Minister Daniel, Daniel Ayers is also representing the help uh, Alison uh, from uh, Friendship West. And we have our consultants, which is Jim uh, Schoenbeck and Evelyn Mayo. And of course, we have Jennifer Ranger from ICP. And Melissa, I, I apologize, I forgot you, M L Melissa Regal. Um, SSR and um, ICP and Downwinders. And we're also reaching in with Paul Quinn, which uh, Mr. Chris Dowdy and um, Friendship West. And our main focus is cleaning up some of uh, the pollutant area in the Southern Dallas area. And this is uh, one of the big focus, which you know, we all have uh, Shingle Mountain, which is right behind me. And then also Lane Plating in the district. Um, I thank uh, Janie and also Chris for helping us um, get started with the amortization law, try to get rezoning. So I'm gonna um, go ahead and, and, and make sure you guys uh, stay muted during the call so we won't have any, any kind of interference. And also um, this will be recorded. It is live right now. And we're also asking you guys to um, sign in on the Google form in chat. If you have any questions, please leave all your questions in chat and Melissa will be uh, able to um, go back and, and bring those questions out to us. We will begin uh, listen, looking at a video behind Shingle Mountain and there, thereafter uh, Fatima will be the moderator for the rest of the evening. Thanks again for joining us. Within sight of downtown Dallas sits a mountain, but not a mountain that anyone in their right mind would want to summit, let alone go near. This is Shingle Mountain, a seven story high, 100,000 ton pile of used toxic asphalt shingles, which has been making local residents very sick for nearly two years. The business owners, Blue Star Recycling, got a permit to open under the guise that they would keep no more than a few hundred tons of shingles on site at any one time, and that they would chip them for reuse on roads and other things. They never started recycling. Instead, after undercutting the prices at the city dump across the street, they simply took in more and more and more shingles, forming this unethical and insane mountain in under a year. Families and other citizens literally live in its shadow and have been battling respiratory illness, headaches, and other symptoms of toxic poisoning ever since. With mounting pressure from local citizen-led coalitions, the city of Dallas finally ordered Blue Star Recycling to shut down and to start removing the shingles. That was a year ago. Not one shingle has been removed. The residents keep getting sicker, the city keeps turning its head, and the awful legend of Shingle Mountain lives on. everyone. Can you all hear me? Mm -hmm. All right, so my name is Fatima and I will be your MC for the evening. And if you have not already, please, please do sign in on that Google form that we dropped. It'll help us so much. And um, I'm going to kick us off by reading a poem that I wrote inspired by Miss Jackson and Shingle Mountain and everything that that community is experiencing. It's called Poison by Zip Code. Air from Latin meaning field. Once there was a field, wild things like to call it home, 
Dandelions rose up and dared the wind to make afternoon wishes, and blue jays cut the mornings like scissors against a thread. Crows kept watch and cardinals played tag through trees now unused as shade from sun. If air means field and a field is covered in waste, it means what is breathed in begins to taste like headache and tired. Feathers became heavy with the weight of ash, and so now no more bright flashes of red against green, no more blue torpedoes shooting from tree to tree in song, and no more crows keeping watch across the long days. Only the people remain. Some of the animals they'd given names to even left, but not to find somewhere easier to breathe. Their bodies just became shells. Some might be sad that horses died. I ask them, those who would lament such a glorious loss of life, such majesty of muscle and mane, consider the people trapped inside before the virus, how throats began to burn and bodies learned new shapes due to the plethora of medications that now accompany meals. People stopped gathering for barbecue before social distancing became the law of the land. Perfumes of grilled chicken and ribs floating on the breeze were gone with the bird song. And what is summer without children playing in the streets? ATVs and bicycles collect dust because the air, the field, cannot be trusted. The air is a choking hand around the neck. The field is an ocean that does not let anyone forget its power. Only those who have yet to encounter its might can be surprised at its transform transformation, at how all the land around the field no longer a field is changed. Laughter no longer cascades across front yards while neighbors become better friends. Isolation found the people around Shingle Mountain even before a virus stopped streets like plague. There is no red paint to keep them safe, no blood to be displayed above doors to make the smell of death go find another home. No, Shingle Mountain knocks on each door. It alters the lives of those it lives beside in more ways than a cloud can change in an hour. It is a reminder of the power each of us has, how if we miss the flowers of a field, it is our job to bring them back by holding those to task who allow poison to scare birds from sky, by crying out when a city does nothing to stop environmental racism, brown bodies forced inside, wilting, lungs no longer trustworthy. And this is not about the virus. Thank you. Um, I'm sorry that I had to write that poem. I'm, I wish that, that poem did not exist.